If you do not make the invisible visible, you will never create a, a change movement. And life should change where you bring out your secrets because it's true. You are as sick as your secrets. Like any business, human trafficking is supported by the basic business principle of supply and demand. On the supply side, that's the product side of any business. In the case of human trafficking, those are the victims. On the demand side, those are the customers. That's what's driving this. That's what's pulling that supply side up. Studies have shown that the average cost of a to buy a person, not you know for sex or something, but literally to own this person and then either rent them out or use them or whatever, is about ninety dollars worldwide. So uh, going back to the business principles, you know, if somebody needs medicine that costs a hundred dollars, somebody breaks their arm and it costs one hundred and fifty dollars to go to the doctor, you throw it away. It's not worth fixing it. You just replace it. This is a business where you can get basically all the supply you need or want. We're on the circuit. We, you go from here to Denver, to California, down to Southern California, you go to Vegas, you go, Louisiana's a good stop. It's, you know, downtown New Orleans, hot spot. Florida, Atlanta, Washington. I mean, it's just a big, big thing. We have a large number of Fortune 500 companies here, so there's wherewithal. I think a major obstacle in trafficking is that we really think it's somewhere else, and especially in the United States, you know, it's somewhere in the third world. It's Cambodia, it's Thailand, it's Philippines. It's those girls from Russia. And all of that's true, but it's very, very much true here. You got, you know, the family friend, you know, I'll buy you $100 worth of groceries if you do this for me. And growing up, that was the most common that I've seen. You know, the older man, the very young girl. The thing with math is it balances. So if we say the average age is 11 or 13, for every 15-year-old that goes in, that means there's a nine-year-old. One of my colleagues uh, saw a nine-year-old girl that was forced to solicit University Avenue. Saturday afternoon and you know there are people that knowingly go into this because they want the money or they want this or that then there's people that are kept you know in a basement in a kennel and you know their their families are threatened or whatever I personally know of one girl who was put in a duffel bag and thrown on 94 and listened to cars go by her head for about 10 minutes then she was taken back and then she didn't try to run away again you know so that's the continuum of it most of the women that we work with in Northside Women's Space are victims of generational poverty. They're practicing survival sex. So the survival sex trade looks a little different. It's a sex trade to, to pay the rent. It's a sex trade to buy the diapers. It's a sex trade. It's when you have no other commodity, no other asset than your body. Now there's something wrong with that. That's not a bankrupt person, that's a bankrupt community. I was initially introduced through my mom and her associates into what a prostitute was. I was molested in the seventh grade by two of her boyfriends and when she favored their, them instead of me, my story, um, I think it's that whole, okay, it didn't happen. Um, but now that I'm a woman, I know that initiated my downfall. When you can't accept what normal sexuality is or experience it normally, 
then where's the gauge? What, what do I gauge and how do I gauge what is normal? Um, I got pregnant early. I had an abortion at 14. I had my first child at 15. I was emancipated as an adult at 15. So there were all these things after that initial occurrence of molestation. I think that's probably the initial lure is the attention and the control because how many women do you know or young girls do you know at say 15 that have no control over their life and here they think this is the one thing they can control I'm going to go over to a house party and I'm going to dance for such and such whose dad is a big time dope man and all I have to do is dance. And one day, for three hours, I can make $400. Sounds good. When you finally come to terms with the pain, then the lifestyle doesn't have the appeal. You know, because that, yeah, the first 48 hours of being out on the street and you're looking cute and your shirt's all clean and your feet don't hurt and your hands and nails are all done 48 hours after that you look like a scrub bucket you start smelling you, you can smell the crack coming out of your body you know and i you know i take pride in my my look that all goes out the window you're just trying to get high and that's just to forget why you're out there in the first place everything in this in our culture is market-based everything is for sale everything is for sale when do we get because we really have reverted you know and, and we're going back to the sense of because the sex trade is slavery we need an abolitionist movement would someone suggest that we made a mistake when slavery was abolished in the united states you know should we have per, per, perhaps legalized it uh, created benefits, had a medical plan. That's really what's being talked about with prostitution. What it means is that when you purchase a person, they're no longer a person. Like, let me give you an example of that. She said she was in the sex trade at 12. She got in the sex trade at 12. She said a man looked at her and said, baby, I." You're 12 years old, I can't have sex with you, but I bought you, I own you, so you're gonna have to do something for me. So he made, a, he made her give him a hand job and a blow job. Why? Because he had the power to purchase her. And then he said, by the way, would you like, to, like me to buy you a hamburger? Thank you for your services. That's power, that's not about sex. That's power and purchasing power. We've got to stop that. They're not purchasable. How can you buy me? How can you buy you? That's, that is talking about immoral. But, it, but when we are willing to sell anything in this world, we will sell a human being. No, no, no. We've got to refine that. We've got to, and, and, and that takes spiritual power to do that. It's not just, it is political power, but, but the church alone, the church, the synagogue, spiritual, spirituality says you are a person of innate beauty and creation. And I value and honor you. I don't buy you.